Hello. It's the Minnesota Pubcast. I'm Molly Burke. I'm here with my co-host, Jason McGovern. Hi. How you Hi. Doing? Hi. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. I was actually looking forward tonight to being able to use one of these, you know, the pots is what they're called, and to actually pot that down and have a really nice, smooth fade. <laughs> it's abrupt. And then that didn't work, and then, of course, on the computer it doesn't oh. work, right? So, hey. All right. Whatever. Good start. Good Whatever. start. Welcome back, guys. You know uh, it's been We're a little here. break, so that's why I'm rusty. That's what it was. I was rusty because it. Uh, what do we take a week off? One, we, we took one week off. I know once a week is kind of rough for us. It's not enough. It's not enough. We'll get back. And now that the Wild are out of the playoffs, <laughs> pretty much. We, yeah, no, they're done. Uh, then Jason, we'll be back to. They have a whole other game. They have four more games if they had any chance, but they suck and they have no chance. They of being have Chicago. another no game. No chance of being Chicago. No chance. Anyway. Okay, um, well. That's not what you were saying last week before they started the series. Oh, I know. And then, boy, well, we hit a warm or a hot goalie over there, too. Um, anyway. Well, and I think they played really well the first game. I think they played uh, They played horribly last well, the night. The second game was really bad, too. The second game, yeah, that was 4-1. Last night, night was just like 1-0. Are you fucking couldn't even get a goal? Like That just pisses me off. No one was making goals, so whatever. Well, and we weren't making bad. very much out of our chances either. I mean, they they didn't play that poorly, but they just we our guys look our goal good. scorers aren't they scoring really goals. Look, they do look good, but yep. they're yeah, you're right. They're, that's exactly. The, I'm going tomorrow, by the way. Oh wow, that you know, I I want to you gotta text me after that and just let me know what the vibe was. Yeah, either way, win or loss. I, I, I'm I feel curious like it's to see how it's gonna be hyped go. up the most ever because we just want to see them get to the next game so badly and i think they want to win too i really think they want to win. see i think you're gonna see i I don't people first of all anybody who goes to a game especially a playoff game you're a pretty big fan usually so you're not you're not gonna go there and be apathetic but i I gotta feel the season ticket holder that's been at every game this year you're going tomorrow night going all right well see you guys next year i mean you're you're not going in thinking all right we just got to go to chicago and then we'll come back and and no no there's i don't think there's a whole lot of hope out there for that there's a we need a miracle man (sighs) miracle on ice round two yeah i don't think the the old uh herb herb brooks right i don't think he's coming back from the grave to uh to bring these guys back from the doldrums i miss him um but anyway so the whole (laughs) point never knew him (laughs) miss him never knew him missed him Oh, I just really miss him. Uh, th- but the point of that is we would we should be able to figure out a way where we're going to do two shows a week again here. Right. So, anyway. Uh, but what did, what, how do well, we got to start about the fight? The, well, we, we haven't we talked had to, since the fight yet. Right. We, I mean, it's, it's, it was a big weekend of sports. And for us, still in, still in the playoffs for hockey, you know, an extra big weekend for Minnesota. But, man, this is usually the, the time of the year where I'm just, like, ready to – kind of slide into summer and like maybe go to a few twins games and like not really give a shit about baseball. But I've been really pumped about all these different sports been going on. The Derby was this weekend. The fight was this weekend. Did you have a horse in the Derby? Like, did you bet on that or no, actually that was, this was the first year where I really didn't do any pre reading to the Derby. Okay. Not I didn't, like I ever I bet. Didn't pay but... I didn't even watch the race. I didn't see any of it. I didn't bet on anything. And I usually, Pick a, at least just pick a horse and, and sure. put something down and at least have a, a, a something to care about. But I didn't even care about it this year. And I was working during it, so that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. But, yeah, you had that. You had twins. You had wild. Twins sweep the White Sox. Twins yeah. swept a series. Did they do that once last year? I don't know. Jeez. But Probably they actually not. look all right. So it we got something. Fine. You know what? Hey, maybe the boys of summer will give us something to look forward to because, like I said, the boys of winter are done. And I, I really think, though, that these – Maybe this, the Twins are going to bring up their prospects. They might be good this year. They, it's, I don't know what's happening. I mean, we're, we're a month in. Let's not get too excited. I know. And they were actually – they were 500 <laughs> last year, like two weeks ago this time too. So it's it's hard to get too pumped. But, again, we don't even have the prospects up here right now, and we're, we're still winning some games. So. Yeah. We're true Minnesota fans. Don't get too excited, Jason. We're only a month in. Don't worry. We're going to lose against Chicago anyway. Oh, well. Here we go. <laughs> you couldn't be more Minnesotan than right there. That was it. That, that is a Minnesota sports fan in a nutshell. Oh, it was a good run, guys. It was really fun to watch you guys because the Excel is a really nice arena and Target Field's really nice too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Target Field Sunday went to the game and it was empty. Beautiful day, 75 degrees and so sunny. Weird. And there was nobody there. It was unbelievable. That's you could go so sit weird. wherever you wanted. I mean, it's because they're still not considered good. I mean, sure. they aren't good, but there's the three games out of first place. They're, speak they're, any they're of the year. To watch. Speak any of the year. I I I rather go like I don't get too pumped to go until like and give me two more weeks and then I'll be like, all right. 
Sure. You find it, is, it is here. early May. It is yeah. very early. But I still, I mean, still 75 degrees on a Sunday. But I'm wow. thinking of the families out there that you can go get a $9 ticket and go sit wherever you want. I mean, this is right. the time to go bring the kids and, you know, and have bring a day the at the ballpark. Bring the kids. I don't know. I had a good day not at the ballpark. I was at people were out and about out here. Like what do you enjoying, mean? Just in enjoying the neighborhood and enjoying the restaurants and <laughs> just because of the weather, you mean? And, Everybody yeah, just yeah. out about, yeah. It, well, yeah, riding bikes and it. running and yeah, it was it was a it was a perfect weekend. Well, did you see the fight? I, I saw the fight. The fight of the century. The fight of the century. <laughs> what what were your impressions? Uh you know, I was happy I watched it. Um, I watched it with kind of a bunch of people. <laughs> it was it was rough because it was Towards the end of the night when everyone had been drinking, most people were pretty good, but there were a couple of people that were like, you know, falling asleep. <laughs> well, I, that fight will do it. And it was, it was, uh, I'm happy I watched it. It was underwhelming. Who, who, were you watching it with people that watch much boxing? No. Okay. So it was pretty. No, but I was with a bunch of, you know, dudes who aren't like totally clueless. Still no sports and stuff. Right. Because I watched it with a, a bunch of people that really don't know boxing at all. I mean, I was the expert in the room, and I remember I looking back on it, like, the, even on the way home, I was going, Jesus, I said a couple of things that were really stupid. Like, just making, you know, saying things about, I said Floyd Mayweather, if he goes 50 and 0, could be one of the best boxers of all time. Or I might even said he could be the best boxer of all time. That is not true. Now that I've thought about it, and now that I've th- thought about all of the other great boxers that have had to fight other great boxers and how he hasn't, I mean, I, I really, I built him up for this fight, but. I I, I want to know, were the people that you were watching it with, were they complaining the whole time? Were they saying, no. this fight sucks, why is he running around, or any of that? No, I wouldn't say that. Okay. I, I think they were just mostly observing and, and enjoying the show, and then, uh, I don't know, after a while. It was underwhelming, because it, it, he did exactly what he was expected to do, which was like disappointing, but also that's how he wins. Right. If you, if you want to win, you, you do what you know it's going to make you win. No, and, and I i mean, some guy in one of the columns I was reading today listed all the fighters that would go toe-to-toe with you in the ring. And, oh, for sure. I mean, Muhammad Ali is the is the best example. I mean, look at him now. And he had, I think, was it the fight? I don't remember who it was. Oh, God, one of his last fights, though, where he was, I mean, he they went the distance. The guy, the guy was asked, it was Larry Holmes, I think, but he was asking the referee to stop the fight. He kept looking at the ref like, I'm beating the shit out of this guy. He won't go down, but I am literally killing him. It's and, not a clean fight. No, and, and he, di- I mean, we've all seen what happened to Muhammad Ali. He's got brain injuries and, and, and major issues because of it. And I think Money Mayweather, and his name is a perfect, uh, perfect nickname, He's smart, and he knows how to hype a fight, make money off a fight, and then not get hit. I mean, that's what he does. That That's Mayweather boxing. Mm-hmm. And we, I think what we all were hoping was that Pacquiao could be the guy that would come in and make him box because only Pacquiao could be fast enough and strong enough to really like corner him and make him have to swing. Yeah. And the first six rounds, you actually got a little bit of a that. A little bit of it. I mean, I had it, and I, I, I'm a dork. I always kind of keep a scorecard in my head. So I'm always sure. going round for round, you know, who's up 10-9. Sometimes doing. I can't tell when they're landing punches, though. It's hard to – it's it's hard when they're moving fast. It's when, like, okay, did it hit their, did it hit their face, or did he, did he actually block it and did it hit, you know, the edge of his arm or whatever? Even the announcers were talking because about – Because they don't – I'm sorry, but they don't really react. <laughs> well, no. In slow motion, you can see, like, a little reaction, and then they're back in it so fast. It's like – there's no blood. There was no bruising, no blood, and it's like, come on. Well, no, and you talk about that reaction that they have to react so quick, like they yeah. can't act stunned or, or you know, because the second they do, now they've just been hit four more times, you know. Right. So yeah, it is. It's instant. And what the announcers on HBO or HBO slash so- Showtime uh, were were saying was that even the the judges themselves could kind of be swayed because you had such a Pacquiao crowd in there that any time Pacquiao threw and maybe made contact with any part of Mayweather, the crowd went nuts. So think about, too, if you're the judge and you kind of they kind of have their backs to you, or you know what I mean, where you can't really necessarily see the punch, even though that's your whole job, that you could be swayed by the crowd, which I thought was kind of interesting. That you, mm-hmm. but, but, yeah, it's that hard to see it. But there also weren't any punches thrown in that fight. I mean, the, the, thing, that, the thing coming into this, again, the, what we thought maybe something would happen here is because Pacquiao throws a ton of punches. He comes in and just swings, and he, he throws upwards of a 1,000. He does, he's moving. He's he moves and he's bouncing and he's he's throwing punches and Mayweather really doesn't move. Well, no, at all. Mayweather lets you come to him, right. and then the second you get close enough to hit him, he ducks out, right, and then starts over, and then does the same thing over and over. And every once in a while, he'll counterpunch. That's it. That's his move. And the, I mean, 
the way he does it, when a lefty throws a power punch, throws that left hook, yeah, he just shoots to his right, and he's like a ghost. I mean, he's just gone. Like I don't think Pacquiao's ever fought anybody that but can he, do that. But he doesn't have that like bounciness that other boxers have. Do you know what I mean? Like no, you I, watch Pacquiao, I, I, and you're almost like, wow, like he looks like he's working harder, which and Mayweather doesn't look like he's working at all. Well, yes, and when he moves, he's it's just so smooth slick. and yeah, yes, it's he's smooth so and it's quick. Slick. Uh, speaking of the bouncing, did you see Jimmy Kimmel behind Pacquiao? I on did. The entrance? So, oh my God, it's hilarious. <laughs> so one of my favorite parts about actually watching the fight was not the fight itself. It was, and I'm sure everyone else is with me here, but I loved looking at the first few rows and seeing who was in the rows. And most people I didn't notice. Like I saw um, the football player. What's his name? Tom Brady. Tom Brady and the owner of the Patriots. I think yeah. were in the first row. Yeah. And then I, you know, and then everyone else I didn't really recognize, but there were a bunch of rich white people. <laughs> And uh, a lot of rich women, you could and tell. a lot of women, and they all were like, you know, the very. I loved it because I loved watching their expressions, and and they had the fake, you know, like the really small fake noses and the long blonde hair, and they were all kind of wearing like the bad, expensive, glittery dresses. And they were all seeing their first boxing match of their lives, and they're kind of sitting there. Mm. And I'm <laughs> like, man, if I was in the front row, I would like, I would have someone teach me how to just like sit perfectly so my face looks perfect <laughs> the whole time like well, i'm that's there for the whole a reason there, right? I, i'm how many people are watching this do you right. think the whole well hundreds of i mean a hundred million people probably saw that at least i, 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 mean, I don't know so. i don't even know how many yeah people and i actually that. never even i never worldwide even heard the I, mean, I have no idea but oh my god that was one of my favorite things was seeing that and just just the enormity of the event and and the extravagance of of Mayweather, like having Justin Bieber and having having the Burger King, and then you see the opposite from Pacquiao, who has like Jesus on his, you know, on his his robe, and who has a very different crew of people with him, well, and people see, are going crazy for him. I, I I was the only one still paying attention this early on in the group that I was with, but he was they were putting a robe on Pacquiao, and he told him no, and he just went huh. out in a t-shirt. Which I I don't think I've ever seen a boxer do. And then oh. and again, you talk about opposite worlds. You got Mayweather in that leather thing with the big gold zippers. They're like uh-huh. four inches long. Like he just looked like a complete buffoon. But he, that's I mean, Mayweather. He is He's a going buffoon. over the top. Yeah, that's that's what he does. Um, but so okay, so overall, I just I think that we got exactly what we expected. Oh, we haven't thrown this part in there too, though. Did you hear that Pacquiao was actually injured before the fight? No, I didn't. He had a torn rotator cuff in his oh, right nice. shoulder. Really so, nice. So, and there's a so lot that was of comfortable. Well, there's a lot of controversy around that. I mean, his, now his trainer's coming out saying he shouldn't have fought. Which now you say that, but then if you if you if you back out of that fight three weeks before it, which is when he hurt himself, the the I mean, we've been waiting seven years for this or six yeah. years for this. It would have been it would have been just dra- it would have been horrible. Right. And I guess and I guess the other way of looking at it too is. I think Pacquiao knows he's not getting hit. <laughs> like he knows that this isn't a dangerous fight for him. He knows he either has to go attack Mayweather or he loses. But I don't think he's ever going. Uh oh, you know, I could be hurt here. I could be knocked out. Right. So I think he might have just been like, you know what, <sighs> for eighty, a hundred million dollars, who who cares? I mean, literally, who cares? I'll go. I'll take this money, go run for president, and, and win, and run the Philippines for the rest <clears throat> of my life. I mean, I, I, I mean, but, but I think there's gonna be. Do you think there's gonna be a rematch? And would you watch it? Well, at first, I thought there was no chance of a rematch. Now with this injury thing, which this could also be bullshit. Like, this whole thing could be bullshit. Maybe sure. he's not hurt at all. Uh, but that would be the only way I would watch a rematch. Well, and Pacquiao was like, I won. I mean, of course he's going to say I know, that. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, no maybe he, he is. that in his heart. There's no way. Like, There's well, no way. yes, I won. I won. Okay. Really, dude? Like, no, you didn't. And it, I think that was Max Kellerman. I, I can't remember that guy. But he was going at him. He's like. Well, oh God, he on was my really... scorecard and all the judges' scorecards and Letterman's and the, like he's like nobody had you even close, dude. Like, yeah. how do you explain this? Uh, th- that also reminds me of a very interesting clip that I saw the other day, though. Um, former HBO announcer, he might have passed away. And God, I cannot believe I can't think of his name. Larry Merch is it Larry Merch? Ah, uh, anyway, he he got into a, he was interviewing Mayweather after a fight, mm-hmm. and I, I I remember seeing this at the time. Oh, this is probably five years ago or something, but he, I don't remember what he asked, but Mayweather was like, fuck you, man. Like, you never give me a fair fucking interview. Fuck you. You're a piece of fucking shit. <gasps> like, in his face, like, in a, this guy's 65, 70 years old. He's in his face. And this, the guy is like, he kind of looks at the camera, the, 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 the reporter guy. The interviewer. And, he, and he's like, do you really just sit? And he looks at him and he goes, if I were half my age, I'd fucking kick your ass. That's right what he to, said. Right to Floyd Mayweather's face in a boxing ring. 
Like, it's one of the coolest clips you've ever seen. You, I, I'll have to pull it up for you. It's one of the coolest. Go YouTube that right now. It is, uh, it is one of the coolest like, things I've ever seen. Mayweather, you don't, you don't get the luxury of having an interviewer. The biggest asshole that you are. And the fact that you are undefeated, someone's going to ask you some hard questions. You would hope. And they're going to be a little unfair maybe sometimes. But learn how to answer them, dude. Well, uh, we'll, we'll continue You're doing the controversy fine. here. You're doing fine, buddy. Did you hear that he didn't let... Uh, was, God, a guy better with names. Or show prep. Uh, maybe <laughs> Rachel Nichols, uh, ESPN, or former ESPN reporter, not sure who she writes for now, and Michelle Beadle, who I do know still is at uh, or is back at ESPN. These two reporters, they obviously brought up the domestic abuse stuff, sure. and he banned them and, and revoked their credentials on fight night. He said, you can still come to Vegas, you can cover everything around the fight, but you will not be at the fight. Because mm-hmm. Mayweather, he was the promoter of that fight. Like That was all him. Everything right. about that. The ticket prices, everything was set by him. And, uh, and he got some backlash for that, too. But, and so why don't, we, why don't we go into that a little bit? Am I, are we supposed to feel bad? Are we bad people for watching that fight over the weekend? Are we, is there something wrong According with us because he's a bad apparently person? We're, apparently, we're supposed to feel very guilty that we're essentially paying a domestic abuser to <laughs> to entertain us. What, what and what's make your a lot of money? What's your take on that? What's your comeback to that? Or or do you have a comeback or do you uh, agree? I don't know. Man, you know, I have I have a hard time with this. All the time I have a hard time with this. Like I put this on our grid, but you know, the same thing happens in the NFL. The same thing happens like with Woody Allen would be like an instance for me where it hits a little bit closer home because it's I don't know, just it's just more relatable because he abused a child, and I watch his movies probably more than I watch the NFL. You know what I okay. mean? So I had to really think in my head, like, how I felt about the situation <laughs> and how I felt. Like, it's re- it's re- that's, like, a struggle for me. I know that's like, sounds crazy, but for me, it comes down to, in these instances, I kind of trust the law, and if someone is convicted of a crime like that, I think I would avoid them more than if... Well, but um, even if they are convicted and then they do their time, I mean, like, if they, then they, he still has a... I mean, I know. speaking of Mayweather specifically, he still has a right to fight then, right? Right. So, right. I guess that's what I'm saying is, is I trust the law and these people have done their time. Because I think... The, uh, but then there's, you know, there's a lot of allegations swirling around that they still do it. Well, the hypocritical part so, of all of this, and uh, br- so, the, but like, like I'm sorry. So, Woody Allen, yeah. for instance, he was never convicted. He never served time, but someone found him innocent. So, I have to trust that there that his innocence. Was, Don't we all assume correct. he's guilty, though? Anyway, I know that's the hard part. Is not, like, I'm not saying that's right. I just I think we all just say that was where the I mean, system I mean, got it wrong or something. In some way or another, yeah, I guess we're kind of like, well, he kind of was a creep. You yeah. know what I mean? But. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to kind of um, balance all that in my mind. Well, I think the Woody Allen thing, and I think artists, that's a different issue. And we, maybe we should come back to but that. It's all, but, but we're all paying them to entertain us, right? You know, and we're buying their things. We can say no. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to support, you know, his movie. I'm not going to buy the fight. I'm not going to do things that. That I know in some way or another, even if it feels minor to me, I'm, I'm going to consciously make an effort to avoid how, this person getting paid and supported for what they do. Does I, that make sense? Yes. It, but I, I guess and it was just really hard because it's a really broad statement. I guess my thing is, I'm not, I'm not going to Woody Allen, to Floyd Mayweather, to Adrian Peterson. I'm not going to any of these people to babysit my nephew. Okay. That's that's not going to happen. <laughs> or or not because it would or not just because it's not with possible. Your girlfriend or your <laughs> right, wife. Right, 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 hey, right. You, uh, just exactly. hang out with her for a little bit. Exactly. Don't say anything wrong, but, honey. W- but what I do enjoy them doing is, it, and let's just get specifically to Adrian Peterson and Floyd Mayweather, to NFL and, and fighting. I enjoy seeing them commit acts of violence against other men <laughs> for my pleasure. That's what I'm into. I like okay. watching them beat the shit out of each other, whether it be boxing or football or whatever. And UFC is one of the biggest sports in this country, too, right now. We, it's a blood sport. I mean, they're, they're literally blood sports. Mm-hmm. We watch it for the violence. And then we have the nerve to pick at them when they're violent off the field. Now, uh, granted, a good human being has to be able to separate, separate. the two. Well, it's work. But that's, <laughs> that's not their, necessarily... That's their job. That's not necessarily easy. And it's... 
boxing especially there's not a whole like, lot of like in boxing and in football you are going against somebody you are fighting someone you are abusing someone you're not it's not abuse because abuse is is when the other person essentially says no and, right and, both people are right are, are both in on this yes one. Yeah. they're both in on it so it's 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 like you know completely different so there's i like to say i don't like to give them any excuses but I do understand but, but where I, someone I, could be inherently violent in their work, how it's easier to roll over into their into their daily life. I just think it's really it's really hypocritical, and I, I think it's hypocritical hypocritical of us to attack someone for 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 doing thing for being violent when we literally pay them millions of dollars to be violent for our entertainment. Like I, and if you're one of those people who has never watched boxing and you avoid boxing because of what it is, and then you hate Mayweather and what he does, then I can maybe. But I don't know if it's hypocritical it, because inherently you know that the good thing is to not abuse someone, whether it's physically and mentally, emotionally, and any and even if you're and even if you're a boxer or a football player or whatever in your work life, we expect those men to to make that distinction between work and real life agreed but i you know? i think that we need to look in the mirror a little bit when we because i think that if that same thing that allows them to be abusive is that same thing that we love about watching them abuse each other you know when they're into it no i understand same... i understand where it's easier for someone who is constantly violent in their work life. I understand no, what I'm saying is that tendency. we all have that or we wouldn't enjoy watching it on TV. Like I obviously still have but that I in don't me under, too. I, but, but it's, but it's different when people, like I just said, it's different when people are making the conscious decision to fight against each other. There is a difference in that than watching someone abuse somebody else of less power. Right. NFL teams have the same power against each other they've consciously made the choice to fight and, and all i'm saying is i just uh, what i'm saying is i think that in society we have this undercurrent of violence well yeah it's just always <laughs> there and we and we're all capable of it and yeah we we most of us don't do it obviously and you are a better person if you don't like i'm not i'm not excusing it but i'm just saying i i, I really do think the spectators themselves need to kind of go what are we ex why how do we expect these people to be perfect when we, what we pay them to do is extreme I, violence but that's what i but that's what i'm th how do we how do we change that then like how do we change that as a culture because we expect them to know the difference between work and regular life no, that's I, what we expect what i'm getting at is what, maybe we shouldn't desire so much violence from like maybe football should go away <laughs> I, don't get me wrong i no, love football I, no i don't, i don't think I, I think a more evolved species, like human beings in 200 years, <laughs> I would hope. Go away. Yeah, okay. I would hope football and boxing and these things. We don't do the gladiators anymore, right? Like, we evolved past that. We well, said, hold on, we're not going to sick tigers on the I, fucking people guess, anymore. And I guess I will say that gladiators were slaves and they were forced into that. Right. Nobody is, which being is much forced worse, into this, which is. Okay, hold on. So one more, one like more a, point there, okay. though. Because you're not going to find a whole lot of well to do people with well-to-do backgrounds that are boxing or in the NFL, not over in general. Okay, but, they're going to come from tougher upbringings and that's why they chose that sport. But it, 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 you don't choose to get hit in the head all the time. If you can go make a million dollars for your dad's company, I like, mean, it, why would you do that? You know, it's more, it's usually because you did come from a tough background to begin with. I don't know. I think that's kind of a blanket statement. Maybe, like maybe the NFL, but I think that's kind of a, like hockey's a very, well, I'm talking some, boxing in the NFL. Hockey and baseball and basketball are all very different than that. But the two violent sports I'm talking about, the two big violent sports, the people are, that are in it, I mean, like Manny Pacquiao and Money Mayweather, both of them from extreme poverty. I mean, Pacquiao was 14 and, and uh, homeless. By, I mean, the, and, pa and Mayweather was, had a father that was in and out of prison and, and you know, d d was totally poor his whole life, too, until he got into boxing and, and became you know, a superstar. So uh, I think you don't okay. get there if you, you know, grew up with a guy that with a dad that works on Wall Street. I, I just don't, I don't think you you don't even you don't get think to the like first the Manny, step. like the we're talking about like the white boys of the NFL, like the Manning brothers and like Tom Brady didn't come from like good backgrounds. Like, are we talking about you're are talking we talking about, about, the, about you're talking black about the 1%. men in NFL? You're talking about the 1%. And then you then you start. But then you think about how many what is your percentage? What is your what what like? 
<sighs> like how many people that play football and want to play football professionally make it to a professional level? Very oh, a tiny, little. Tiny percent, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't think we can make a blanket cultural statement about the NFL like that when we're talking about such a small, minute amount of people in America that play violent I sports. Can, I think you can, though, because when the, such a small amount does and then uh, such a high percentage of them do have a, a tough background story. To me, those kind of go hand in hand. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. Really, and again, I, I think I, I'm definitely. I, I I guarantee you, there's a percentage of the NFL who were rich kids. I mean, that's for sure. But I think, especially with boxing, I mean, you can really look at almost every superstar boxer and their background, and they it wasn't an easy one. What, what yeah, I mean, it, it's sure. Okay, it it's, might be more culturally. Uh, in a certain way, people from rough neighborhoods you know, to have more boxing gyms. I don't know. I'm like, again, I'm, well, they I'm here. They see it I'm as making... a way out is what I'm saying. Whereas the white, the, the, not even but... necessarily white, but just any rich kid is not going to go, well, yeah, I'm going to fight to get out of the ghetto. I don't have, there's no ghetto. That's what like... I'm saying. As a way out, the chances of making it out are so small to begin with. And everybody knows that. No one like starts playing football in high school. Like very few people start playing football in high school. And they're like, this is my dream. I want to make it to the NFL. Like you, you, you recognize those few people every once in a while. They're like that. That dude has talent. That dude's gonna make it to the NFL. He's going there. But even way back when you start, you you know if you're not gonna make make it. Like you know your chances are slim to none. Like I don't think anyone joins sports as a way to like get out of something well, good. Remember though, too though, there's there are still parents of children that think their kids in fourth grade are going to be professionals. And but that's then, also and a so very small amount. And that, that and those are rich white it. parents that are that are yes, investing thousands of dollars in their kids' training to, to be a professional athlete. When normally or it's not it well. is like it is the good kid who grew up like, you know, who worked his way through the, his fucking shitty ass high school football team with like no money. <laughs> like right, right. just as raw talent. Like you know what I mean? No, I do. Like I do. all the kids I know, they were that rich white kids, <laughs> like that became good athletes, Ama- amazing athletes, made it to like junior level or something. Yeah. You know? Usually, yeah. I like, nobody makes it to the NFL. No, it's point zero zero one percent. I'm sure something like that, something right. crazy like that. Um, they right. give a better chance of winning the lottery. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Maybe. <laughs> but yet we still tell our kids you can do anything you want when they're kids. We lie to them and lie to them. God, we're jerks. Uh, all right, we are, we are already halfway through the show. Let's take I think I'm going to be realistic with my kids. What, tell them, what are you going to tell them? Well, settle for mediocrity because that's, that's what you're looking at in life. That's, what do, you, do what, what you want to do, but be? be realistic about your talents. Wow, you really like, <laughs> you really think that's going to happen? So, well, so you just. You're gonna shoot down your kids' dreams really early. No, I think they should be involved. I just, I just want them to be realistic. Like the most important thing is, is to get good grades, and to, to, to have different plans in your life. <laughs> plan A and Plan B. I, th- I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, uh, the execution part, I'm interested to hear about. That'll be, uh, that'll I don't be. Know. My parents are pretty goes. realistic with me. Were they? For sure. <laughs> I don't. I. I don't remember. I, I remember always telling my mom I was going to be a professional something and buy her a house, but that didn't ever work out. But she never said, uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you stick on those books there, bud, which she probably should have. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll be right back to Minnesota Podcast. Hey, everybody. This is comedian Paul Mercurio, and I'm very excited to say that I packed up my podcast, The Paul Mercurio Show, which wasn't my first choice for a name. My first choice was Go Ahead, Touch It, but apparently that didn't test well. Well, I'm taking my podcast and I'm moving it to the Alive and Social Network, which is weird because I'm neither alive nor very social. I've interviewed a few people you might know, like Sir Paul McCartney. Yeah, that guy. He was in a band or something. I'm not sure. Stephen Colbert, Bob Costas, Jay Leno, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Kristen Chenoweth, and many, many more. I've won Emmy and Peabody Awards for my work on The Daily Show. I've had my own Comedy Central special, been on HBO, and I'm excited to be part of the new network. Paul Mercurio shows available on iTunes, Android, and available at paulmercurio.com. Listen to my show every week. Every week you will get rich. How? I give you a foolproof method to go out and make $100,000 without ever leaving your couch. Okay, that's a lie, but the podcast, it's good. 
Join longtime radio personality and producer Kelly Guest and friend, CEO of Fantasy Gifts, Colleen Bertino, as they talk about all things sex, men, women. Lend them your ears and learn everything you wanted to know about sex and intimacy. Only here on the Alive and Social Network. Hey, we're back. What's your name, What's your name fool? What's that? <laughs> Don't sing that line. Uh, what's your name, fool? What's your name, fool? Uh, hey, what's your name, fool? All right, we're back. Let, let's. What, what do you, what oh, you want? this you drink want? is making me tired. The what? The weather? Mm, this drink. Oh, the drink. <laughs> what are you drinking, by the way? A little sangria. That's not a little sangria. <laughs> How full was that when you left your place? Yeah, but sangria is like a mixture of juices and wine. True. Well, how full was it? Like here? All right. That's a solid amount. Did I stop <laughs> drinking it? No, I love it. Um, it's in a Columbia water bottle so that people think it's, you know. Like it actually looks like Gatorade. it would just be like some kind of juice. It doesn't look like you're drinking alcohol. I never would have guessed that was alcohol. Then again, I should have known you. You're supposed to go work out yeah, after it must this. Be. <laughs> Actually, I, I got a buddy that works out all the time and says working out with a little buzz is a good thing. Oh, did, really? Yeah. I mean, okay. just because I think that you, I think I mean, you get a little is... energy off of it, actually. Really? Because I'm... But you're body. forgetting the falling bed. down buzz, not the uh, uplifting buzz. Anyway. <sighs> I, okay. One Don't more... Don't you get kind of sleepier after one beer? Yes. I'm, I'm two-thirds like of the way through this vodka one. vodka Red kind of Bull? Tired. Yeah. Or like a whiskey Coke? Like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're getting sugar. Well, the sugar and beer, too. I guess. But I suppose there'd be some of the some sangria. Coca-Cola. Coca -Cola. Like the juice, too. Um, oh, God. Speaking of that Twins game when we went this weekend, I drank, like, five different types of alcohol that day, I think. It sucks. So, that was really stupid. <laughs> God, I was acting like a kid that day. Uh, anyway, okay. Well, speaking of sports real quick, I want to... So, the FSN North girls are gone. Since Bye. we're still on the sports vibe, Bye. we might as well stick with Peace. it. What, what the fuck was that? I they've been on thought, for a while. They were on for a long time. Who it's thought the, that was a good idea to begin with? the same with? shit as the, the girl in the bikini that brings around the round card yeah. in a boxing match. In, in 1920, I get it. You got the cigarette girl and you got the it's girl the in the same, bikini. And I get it. Same, but how are those you know, people still... Like, haven't the haven't those owners of teams and all that died off? Like, have, why do we... No, apparently you not. guys still think that women should only be prizes to look at. Well, I mean, you do sometimes. You talk about them that way. Oh, absolutely. I'm completely super fit. Or women are objects completely. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it, it's funny because FSN even itself, and I think we've can talked about. It's getting kind of dark in here. Do do? Oh, I See, I worked in a dark studio. I like that. Yeah, but I'm getting tired. I love the dark studio. Um, <laughs> shoot, what was I going to say now? You should These turn stupid... on the one that goes up, though. So it, because that one, that, that lamp, it points down and it just, do you know what I mean? So I deal with every. Yeah, but that lamp. Okay, that's good. See, now that the light is dispersed more, it doesn't give such a strange effect, like a spotlight effect. Need a webcam. Um, oh, what I was gonna say though is, J we've talked about Jamie Hirsch. I think the she's the FSN kind of anchor or one of them. Okay. And she's very good looking, but she's not there just for her looks. But I guarantee, yeah, obviously, she's... looks help too. But like she's Wes reporting. Walls is partially there because he's a good looking dude she's too. She's reporting. Yeah, and and but. The FSN girls, they were just there to like this introduce is Fox segments. Sports North. Yeah. You're watching Fox Sports North. And they, that's exactly how they talk to. God. You're watching Fox Sports North. I just want to know. Go Wild. Home of the Minnesota Wild. What else did they say? I, I don't know. Th I, thankfully, I usually really watch the bar, so I can't hear them. Yeah, they call you a sandwich. But what, what I don't understand is. They're just all rail thin. They all look like me. That oh, all... they need a sandwich. Yeah, like they could. They could eat I was like, like, what? They look uh, like a sandwich? No, they don't look like a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that would I be was like, thing. I've never heard of this term before. What does that mean? But I just, I, I don't understand. I mean, I, first of all, I'd love to know what they were getting paid. I, it wasn't much, obviously. It couldn't but, have gotten been much. But I just want to know, what, what was the, who are they going for? Because you're not getting women. Well, that's for sure. I think a lot no. of women are out there going, that's gross, or that's sexist, or they're or just not interested at all. They just, eh, just... I mean, I still think it's weird that that the wild 
only have girls that come and scrape the ice. In super tight spandex pants and tight little shirts, too. With their hair down. Yep. I'm like, they're do- t- yep. technically, you're doing a job. Yeah, you're like, at work. You're at work. Why are there Why are there four of you in a line doing that? You've never seen the Florida ones. I think it's are the Panthers. In they're are in they bikinis. In bikini? It's like it's, it's like, like a, it's like heat cheerleaders. It's like cheerleaders. Yeah. yeah. But it's at least cheerleaders. Like you know, at least they're dancing. Yeah. No. The, I, there's at least some sort of a purpose yeah. to that, I guess. But I mean, the girls that I know that are Viking cheerleaders are immensely talented women. Yeah. No. And. and even like the ice girls, when I see them, I go, oh, wow, well, th- they're hot, or a couple of them are hot. I can't even see their faces. They're just moving around a well, lot. You've got good seats. It's but, funny when they fall, though. <laughs> that's not funny. In front of all those people, you got to feel badly for them. But, <laughs> no, I don't. But <laughs> that's part of your job. Well, that's true. Every once in a while, you're going to fall. But I just don't understand. I, I would never go, if, they, if, if, if that became 30-year-old men that started doing the shoveling job, I would never go, oh, I don't want to go to a wild game anymore. And it's the same with the FSN girls. Like, I would never start watching FSN or stop watching FSN because of them. Exactly. So I don't. Uh, so why are you paying them, and what right. purpose did they did they solve or, or serve? I don't get it. Just uh, other than just pretty faces. mindless in between entertainment that that they think are going to entertain the men that are like you know dumb beer drinking idiots who just stare at the TV. So it's, it's not only degrading to the women, it's also considering your audience to be a bunch of buffoons. Sure. Jeez. I think so. Well done, FSN. Well done. I mean, maybe there are some guys out there that that like that shit still. Well, they like, would really? go to... That's, that's what you like. You like seeing three girls on screen who, who don't... Well, they'd go to events. don't add anything s- besides staring at their faces. They'd go to events and take pictures with people and stuff. Well, I know. Why so would you weird. want your picture taken with a chick that nobody knows... Who doesn't do anything? I don't know. It's like they were trying to get like a mascot or something, but get a mascot. You know what though? We do have a mascot. Uh, the oh, Fox, oh F- F- Fox. FSN should have one. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Well, Fox Sports has one. The stupid robot. You've seen sure. that in football games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They okay. have a mascot. Fine. That's a digitized mascot. At least it doesn't offend anybody. No, there's so many things they could do better than the FSN girls. That I, yeah. I, I am very glad to see that go. Well, um, it, so, it sounds like they kind of realized that, you know, they weren't actually adding any viewers and they weren't making them retain any viewers. Right. But they I, weren't I turning anybody away, day. but nobody gives a shit. <laughs> right. Right. Just nobody cares. Like, I really don't think that that's, that that's a thing anymore. But that's still used as a marketing tactic. I mean, women. Sex sells. I get women that. that serve really no purpose besides just being an object to sell you something because of their beauty. That, I mean, that still is a marketing tactic today. I suppose it's just. I maybe it gross. works. Maybe it worked on me subconsciously a bit, where I don't even realize it. But again, right, obviously not enough, or they would have kept them. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, but like, and what is it? What is it? Well, I guess you have to subscribe to get Fox Sports North, but that. The game is going to make me subscribe to get Fox Sports North. Correct. I want to watch The Wild. Right. I don't give three shits about three girls that I see look like everyone else in Minnesota that are cute. Well, and if we want to bash FSN a little bit more quickly, quickly here, I don't like anything about how they cover the teams. I don't like that they are employees of the teams. I would, I would like to see the commentators cover the teams and actually tell you what's going on instead of just what they want you to tell you. Right. To know. And... Well, that's the most important thing about sports is you want good reporting. You want good coverage. Honest reporting. Right. And you want, you want good reporters. But do you know that Suhan used to be on FSN? He used to do uh, Wolves games? No, I didn't know that. He, I mean, he might have told me that, but I forgot. I think he lasted a month, maybe, because he'd actually bash the team after the game. Sure. You know? And I, I, and I guarantee you, because he is a journalist and he is a good one, he's not just going, he sucks and he sucks. I mean, what content would that provide? Like, I guarantee right. you, he's, he's giving, giving an opinion he's giving, that's interesting, and he is telling you that that team is very good. He's good analysis. Yes. You want good, thought-provoking analysis. And I mean, that's, that's why a lot of guys is. are watching. Guys watch sports for thought-provoking analysis and to actually be entertained by the sports. Yep. And that's why, if you want it, you don't and, watch And women watch, women watch sports to be entertained by the sports. I'm not watching football to like, see my favorite hot player. Right. I mean, it's the same thing. No, you want to watch the game. We're it, pretty much about, all there for the reason. Same the actual reason. spectacle. Uh, 
All right, let's shoot. What? Let's, well, let's take our last break, actually. We'll take a quick break. And we'll come back, and we're going to talk a little bit of beer. We'll talk what? about where to drink beer with your dog, because I, I, I would imagine that's still interesting to you. Do you should, did yeah. you have a couple of spots you at least want to mention to people? Well, not right now, but I'm saying, do you have a couple of like oh, good yeah, spots? Yeah, they're all on the list, though. They are on they're there. They're all on Jerry's list, pretty much. Yeah, J- and Jerry, our, uh, our our City Pages correspondent. Which we should get. We should just get Jerry on to talk about these. We should probably talk to Jerry about the City Pages being bought by the Star Tribune today, too. Oh. That is going to be interesting. And Vitamin disappeared today. Vitamin no longer exists. What? Because of this murder. Apparently, uh, the Star Tribune bought City well, Pages. I thought when they were was... talking about... So Vitamin posted something to Instagram or whatever, and mm-hmm. it was like, Mad Men its finale is coming up in two weeks. That's going to be our last soiree. Soiree. Sorry, and yeah. I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's, it's Vitamin's sure. final soiree for Mad Men. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, no, and it's it's their last soiree. What? Vitamin is no longer. So you're going to have... I, I liked Vitamin. I, ne- I never read Vitamin. I, but I read City Pages more, but I, I liked Vitamin. Well, I just, knowing that we only had two publications that really kind of covered entertainment and, and food and, and that kind of stuff and, and that corner From a local, of, of free local, level. Right. Right. I, I, thought, I thought that it was... A, I didn't know there was only two of them anyway, but I always just kind of read the City Pages. That's pretty good, though. I mean, City Pages and Vitamin were pretty high quality for... For any metro area. But that's what I, I, I never like when they just, I, mean, I, I shouldn't say I never like, but I, I don't like the, the thought of them just becoming one now and getting rid of vitamin. Like, I feel like we're going to lose another oh, no, angle I lo- to I, look I, at things. Absolutely. You know? I mean, I loved having two. It's not like they were like hard hitting no, <laughs> news no. sources, no. but it, it's nice to have two. And it, <laughs> the other thing I did read about that too, just if you're interested, is uh, they're going to have to probably change up those ads. Star Tribune apparently doesn't want... <laughs> The uh, same on. City Pages ads. I There's thought that was part of the one. character of City Pages. Totally. Totally. Uh, all right. We'll come back uh, <laughs> and we'll we'll get into that a little bit. And then what else do we have? Oh, <laughs> we can talk a little standardized testing. That's yeah. always fun, too. We got some John Oliver. A little John Oliver for you right here on the Minnesota Podcast. Reach for this one. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to go back online. Let's turn it on. Kind of. <laughs> that took a very PG direction. Along comes this hit show. I'm constantly burping on stage. Hey, you heard about Madonna, right? (laughs) (laughs) Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Had she fallen to the ground and her eyes rolled into the back of her head, what would you, Tim Mahoney, have done? I'd have tried to make out with her. (laughs) (laughs) Get in line. (laughs) The Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck airs live daily, 9.30 to 10.30, on the Alive and Social Network. Ever Uh, swallowed a bug or choke like Courtney on stage? Yeah. I meant to do this. With Suhan Unfiltered, sports columnist for the Minneapolis Star Tribune, Jim Suhan presents in-depth conversations with the best writers and sports personalities in the area. Suhan brings professional journalism flavor without the verbal censoring. Find out what unfiltered really means only on the Alive and Social Network, SuhanUnfiltered.com. Did you hear? We're back. <laughs> did you hear? Is it Brett Michael? No, no. What's his name? Uh, Brett Daniel. You're really struggling with the names. Tonight. I'm really bad. You're really not that bad, though. Not normally. No, it's just today, I think. But Brett Daniel, that is the lead singer of Spoon. That was who we just came back to there. Uh, he was on. <laughs> he's on WTF recently. Oh, was he? Yeah. And, yeah, I, I listen to every episode, and sometimes the people just blend in. Sure. I just he. It was an interesting interview because. He, there's there was no fun to it like talking mm. about his music and his life and he, he, he it sounded like real business and work for him mm. which it, and i i didn't know if that was just that interview but a buddy of mine has heard him do other interviews Maybe that's too and he said that's just how he is it. yeah yeah it was a not an interview that's gonna stick out to you much but i mean, I mean interesting guy but just didn't seem like he was enjoying himself at all and you think sitting down with mark maron you would be able to enjoy yourself hey do you want to go to mark maron yes if there's still tickets available yes i'll when, be here like june 7th or something where's that the Orpheum. Yeah. I was thinking about awesome. getting a couple of tickets, or the Pantages. I was thinking about getting a couple of tickets, but I was like, who would want to go with me? He, Jason. He pretty much always just riffs, doesn't he? 
when he does stand up? I don't know. I don't think he does a lot of writing. I think he even talks about it on stage, how he's just kind of going with it. Like, but maybe, maybe I'm thinking of one particular stand up. But I don't know. He's such an interesting guy. I'll see if there's such tickets tomorrow, guy. and if there are, we'll I'll grab a couple of them. Um, do you as have long that... as they're not like you know a hundred dollars? Like, what what would be like the max that you would pay to see him? Yeah, it would be no more than a hundred. I mean, like, I would uh, not uh, mind paying fifty to see Marin, of course, okay, but. but... I would imagine it's going to cost more than that. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, gosh, we have a couple of things. We could do that. I think we should talk to Jerry. I think we should get Jerry on next week. I think we let's should not, get Jerry Let's on not too. blow our wad, which I hate that term, but uh, let's not blow our wad on the or Jerry stuff. My mom stuff. said Jeez, in the car once, up. overshot her wad. And I was like, <laughs> Mom, no, you can't. No. no. And she like, started laughing because she realized what the phrase that she used by mistake. I was like, no, mother, you just passed the street. That's all you're allowed to say. That is so gross. You can, mom, Shout out to my mom and Bill. Never say. For taking me to the uh, wild game tomorrow. A, and nice. they're like in the middle of their 14-hour drive back from uh, Arizona today. I mean, the, the drive takes like two or three days, but they're in their longest day today. It's a 14, like 14 hours. Jeez, that's so, a trip. So when I talked to them uh, this afternoon at like, um, I don't know one or something they were they were in like bum fuck kansas like southern south western kansas Jeez, i've never done that drive that all the way to the, what hell no well i've never done the straight south one i've done the from here to florida drive which is horrible <sighs> but i've never bad. done the straight down to like arizona texas or anything they do it they do it twice a year and i i, I might do it one year just to like take their car down for them and then they can drive with a friend or whatever and do a road trip but man and, but the plane tickets are so cheap to Arizona. I can like frequently get them for under t- three hundred, like mm-hmm. three hundred even. So it's like, why am I wasting my time? It's like Chicago when people drive to Chicago. I'm like, oh, just take a plane. And there's sixty fucking bucks <laughs> on Spirit. See, I, I have flown to Chicago, and I felt like it's I've done it all to Chicago. It's not but... the driving there. I think is easier. It's a there's really so easy much drive. Bullshit involved with flying. I shouldn't say it's a. I shouldn't say it's a hard drive, but sometimes, but then if you don't know the exact place that you're going to park, oh, then yeah. you better just fucking forget it and get on a plane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. You know, it's, it's not a bad drive, especially with your friends. It's like a, it's like a, you know, seven hour road trip or whatever, but no, you're, you're better off but it's, just renting it's a car under a hundred bucks and... to fly there. And I get there, you know, an hour early, 45 minutes early on the light rail, jump on the plane get to Chicago, take the L right to my friend's place. It's just like, eh, whatever. Speaking of rail, why can't we get some high-speed fucking trains in this country? Um, How awesome would that be? they're expensive and Republicans hate them. <sighs> Come on. You know that. Well, but wouldn't it be nice? The- I just spent, spent $400 to get out to San Francisco on a fucking airplane. $430. That's ridiculous. I know. I but the just- trains are expensive, too. The trains that we have now. But that's why yeah, I give me a bullet train pricey. and figure out how to do that. There's got to be a way to do that cheaper. Um, boy, we're all over the map now. Uh, all right. All right. I, I don't even know how to talk about the John Oliver thing unless you, unless you want to do that. But I do. We have to at least mention how awesome Game of Thrones is getting. That is that. Sh- <laughs> since only because it's taking HBO. Gonna... That's sending me to HBO. That's all. HBO's do, um, Game of Thrones is fucking awesome on it, it Sunday. Is good. Mad Men was fucking incredible again. I won't go into any more spiels about it because I already had my spiel. But damn, that show is really worth watching from the beginning to the end. Mad Men. Yep. And when is that done now? It's done in two weeks. Yeah, okay. It has two more episodes. And I'm just, I'm starting to get that gut feeling of sadness for it. Really? Yeah. Like, really, like, I really don't want this to be over. You know, some TV shows, they've been on for a long time, and you're like, this is going to be sad. You're ready for it, though. Sometimes. I, honestly, with Breaking Bad, I was like, I just want to see what happens with the characters, and I'm kind of ready for it to be done. Yep. I love this show. Mad Men, I, I don't know. You could see that one just going on and on. You don't know, for a while longer. <laughs> but it has to end. Unfortunately, they all do. They all do. Um, oh, a quick on-air production meeting, too, actually. I'm going to Tame Impala Wednesday mm-hmm. next week. So we won't be doing a show next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So that's for you, the listeners to know, too. So we'll figure out a night or two next week that we mm-hmm. can do a couple of shows. Um, but I don't know. Uh, go Nobody... watch John Oliver. The, the fucking... How much time do we have left? I, we have enough. You oh. want to play the standardized testing? Thing? Okay. And this is what I love about John Oliver and HBO in general. 
besides the fact that it just gives a really unique programming. John Oliver always exposes things that are that no one knows about that need to be fixed. I yeah. mean, nobody, or, not nobody. probably aren't thinking about it. They're not yeah. thinking about it, but it's really fucking important. Like, the things that he brings up are super important and not on the news as we speak, mm-hmm. not the headline news, which I think is awesome. So this week, it's standardized testing and how fucked up standardized testing is. From Bush, with no child left behind, to Obama with Common Core. I mean, the education system in America is fucked. And my friends that are teachers... They have the hardest time with this all the time. So, John Oliver, here, we'll play this clip. I just real quick, Kennedy wrote the No Child Left Behind bill, didn't he? I want Kennedy? To, yes. No, I, I, or he wrote one of Bush's big bills. I, I don't know. I thought that was, I don't know. Okay, just, just throw it out there. Because I, 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 just because it is, it's a bipartisan thing. That is not, you can't say that it's well, conservative or liberal. I mean, it's just both sides are fucking that up. One of the best thing. things that John Oliver said in this 17 minute clip that is worth watching all 17 minutes of was absolutely it was bipartisan because it sounds great. Yeah, how do you no argue with no child, child left, behind? left behind? No, yeah. I'm going to vote against that. Or Affordable Care Act, for that for that matter. Sure. I mean, they're both just they're but supposed it, to but sound like... at least like... there's something liberal about universal health care. Like, that has a liberal tie to it. Just reforming education system, no one really knows how to do it yet. No one knows what the answers are. And everyone is so far removed from the day-to-day lives of teachers and educators that they don't know how to fix it. That's why I I hated even being touched at a federal level, but that's an issue for another day. Yeah. Okay. But okay. So standardized (laughs) testing, uh, standardized testing. So this is just one of the things that John Oliver brought up in his, uh, in his clip. We'll play one minute of it. Pearson and dropped out. Well, she'd have to take the GED, which is now, guess what? Also a Pearson test. In fact, the only test they have no hand in is the HPV test she might take in college. And I can only assume that they'll get on that as soon as they see this fucking show. <laughs> Pearson has enjoyed spectacular growth and profits, and yet their track record is littered with complaints concerning technical glitches, slow grading, and even the contents of their tests. Take take what happened in New York just a few years ago. Almost 30 different test questions have now been declared invalid because they're confusing or have outright errors. They'd already pulled six questions from an English exam related to a bizarre passage about a talking pineapple. A talking pineapple? Well, at the risk of sounding like a DreamWorks executive talking to a CGI animator, tell me more about this talking pineapple. (laughs) Students had to answer questions about the story, which they say goes like this. A pineapple challenges a hare to a race. Other animals figure the fruit has a trick up its sleeve, but the hare wins and the animals eat the pineapple. It ends with the moral, pineapples don't have sleeves. I was really confused because uh, I expected a lot more from them. That article about the pineapple and the hare was stupid and absurd. Yeah, she's not wrong about that because we looked up that test section and we couldn't work out all the answers. Oh my God. And, and so again, so for those that haven't seen this, just for a real quick kind of recap, because we started these standardized testing with child, no child left behind. With, standardized with the, testing has been around for a long time. It's just since Bush, it's become much more, there's been tens added on every year to end by tens. I mean, like it's gone from, they take five a year to they take like 40 or you know, well, something it, insane like that. It's become like the only, it's the only way to judge not only the student, but the teachers too. Like this is the way right. they're using to judge teachers, right. which again, the way this was portrayed to it at the time. I mean, I remember talking about this on the radio back in the day and this was, I mean, the idea sounded good. It was, we have failing schools. So we're going to test that they're getting these kids educated and this is how we'll test it. Now that all sounds good on paper, but it doesn't work. Well, and, and then, and then the schools that, aren't doing well on the test. What do we do? We, we like take away funding because they're not doing well. It's like, or we just make them focus on the test and nothing (laughs) else, which also does no good. Uh, and, but then what reprimand the teachers for their students not performing? Well, you know, there could be plenty of factors why their students aren't performing well. And, and he was mentioning Pearson's in the clip. That's just one of the companies that are, pr- that are one, printing these tests. One, the, like these the huge only company. And, and I believe, if, to quote me, or if you remember if I'm uh, wrong about this, I think that they make something like 10 times more than the NFL does per year. <laughs> 
probably make, I don't know. just printing these tests yeah. and, and, and creating these I mean, tests. they do everything from the GED to, I don't know if they do ACTs and SATs, but I know they do like, you know, every standardized test that you would take in the country. And it sounds like to me, there's not a whole lot of teachers or just educators involved. Like this is a, it's become a business yeah. of creating tests. Yeah. So who, and I think his line too was, "No, this is this is the every child left behind. Like that's what this is. That, that's what that's what you've created." That, mm-hmm. And at again, and this is where where I always hate corruption in government because it's just this has just become another place to throw money. And now corporations right. are making out like bats out of you know they're doing well out of this, and the kids are all still fucked and not learning anything. And I think that we have to really revamp our entire way of looking at education in this yep. country. And we I mean, do. Even just down to like, I think we even talked about this too with maybe with like offices and stuff, but just walking classrooms. I, I've heard a lot of studies about just take your class outside, walk around, and the teacher still teaches, but you're walking around. And yeah. the kids, just because they're moving, can pay more attention because they're getting that energy out. Of, like, just that. I mean, just that's one thing where that never happened in my entire life in my education. Why not try that and try a bunch of other hands things? Hands on things. Yeah. And, and do a bunch walking, more studies. Moving, hands on. Figure out what we can do to make education better for these kids. Um, I've got nothing else. You, you, you have anything else you want to you no, throw out there tonight? I'm tired. This sangria is... <laughs> sangria has kicked my ass. Out. I don't think I'm, I'm going to make it. No, you'd better. All right. Well, that's oh. it for tonight. Uh, like we said, we'll, uh, we'll be back next week. We don't know what night, but we'll talk to you then. See ya. Bye.